So we are going to start our texture unit project today and we're going to explore some different art techniques and do a mixed media project. So this is kind of our first year doing this project. So this isn't an actual picture of what it's going to look like, but it gives you kind of a brief idea. We're creating a mixed media MMS print where we are going to do some different techniques and we're going to start with watercolor. So here's how our week kind of looks. On Monday, we finished our waffle op art drawing. Yesterday, we did our introduction to texture and we did our sketchbooks. Wednesday, which is today, we're going to paint our first three watercolor techniques. Tomorrow, on Thursday, we're going to paint our second three watercolor techniques. And on Friday, we're going to collage all of those together to create the background for our project. So let's talk about today. We're going to use watercolor. With watercolors, we can explore some different textures by the materials that we use and the way that we use the watercolors themselves. So on day one, which is today, we're going to do the following. We're going to section our 12 by 18 paper into six sections. We're going to paint two sections using the wet on wet technique. We're going to paint two sections using the bubble wrap technique. And we're going to paint two sections using the salt technique. So when you are all done for today, this is what your paper is going to look like. And I'm going to walk you through that right now. So when I recorded this video, um, I thought that maybe we would have enough time to paint all our sections in one day, but we're going to divide it up into two days. So it's going to look a little bit different, but I'm going to walk you through it, okay? So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to need a 12 by 18 white sheet of paper, and you can find this on the front round table, and I need you to write your name on that paper because we're gonna put these on the drying rack when you are done. And if we all put it on the drying rack and we've all done the same thing, then it's gonna look the same. So make sure that you please put your name on your paper. If you notice in the video, I have two papers, but you only need one today and then you will do another one tomorrow, okay? So you just need one paper at a time. Then you're going to take your paper and you're gonna fold it the long length. It doesn't have to be perfect. I promise it doesn't even matter because we're just using this as kind of a basic guideline for when you do your watercolor, okay? So once again, I'm using two papers right now, but you're only going to do one, all right? Then you're going to fold your paper into thirds, like so. It's going to create kind of a square shape. Once again, it does not have to be perfect, so here's me doing it one more time. Once again, you're only using one paper today, okay? And then when you're done, you're going to open it back up and you're gonna use your pencil and you're gonna trace over your folds, okay? Now, this does not need to be perfect. It does not need to match the fold perfectly. Once again, it's just a simple little guideline so that you know where you're gonna to paint today, okay? I'm doing two papers in the photo, but once again, you're only doing one paper today. You need six sections and you're gonna draw your lines on the side that's opposite of your name. You should have two papers, but I'm gonna start with the first one. You should have six sections. And we're going to complete some different watercolor techniques today, all right? So since we're doing an MMS um, artwork, we are only going to be using certain colors, okay? So I have watercolor set out. You're going to need a red. You're going to need an orange. You're going to need a black. And you're going to need a purple. Those are the only ones that you're going to need. Okay, and they're already popped out of the containers for you so that you don't have to worry about mixing up and getting colors that you don't need and all that stuff, okay? So, other than that, all you will need to start is you will need a brush, which are also on the front table, and you will need a water cup. And reminders, the water cups are underneath the middle sink in the classroom. It says paint cups on the bottom cabinet. And then you're ready to start, okay? So, we're going to do some different techniques, but... We're going to paint um, each technique twice. So the first technique we're going to do is called wet on wet. And here's what that means. Okay. And for this technique, we're just using red. Okay. So don't even touch these other colors right now. So what wet on wet means is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to wet a section of the paper, just a little section, and then I'm going to get my paint wet and I'm going to paint over it. You see how it kind of just creates the design of the paint and I'm not even like I'm not even like painting paint strokes. So you're going to wet your paper first. You're going to wet the square. And then you're just going to go back and put paint on top of it. And you don't want to really paint the whole thing in. You want it to leave like these little cool 
wet designs, okay? So that's one. So you're going to do two squares in that technique. So I'm going to do one more. So you're going to paint the square with water first. Water. And you need to do this quickly because if the water dries, then this technique doesn't work. That's why it's called wet on wet because the paper has to be wet and then the paint has to be wet. And then I'm going to go back in with my paint. So reminder, I'm not really painting the whole square. I'm just kind of dabbing the paint and letting the water do its thing. Okay? So that's it. That's really fast, right? That's my first technique. That's called wet on wet. I wet my square first, and then I kind of just stripped paper on top, and it makes these really cool, almost like tie-dye effect. All right? So I did that with just water and my red. Okay? So then the second one that we're going to do is we are going to do what is called um, bubble wrap technique, okay? So for this one, we're going to use red and orange. So now I can set my other two colors away, all right? So you're gonna all have a piece of bubble wrap, okay? And to do this, you're going to paint red, you're gonna paint it on your bubble wrap, and you're also going to take orange, but it's, notice how I'm washing my brush out in between so that I don't get the colors dirty. And you're just going to paint the orange right on top of the red. And what this is doing is it's giving you red, then it's also giving you like some variations of the red so that you can have some reddish oranges in there. Now notice again how I'm washing my brush every time I switch colors, okay? And when you're done, and you're ready for a square, you're just going to turn your bubble wrap over and you're going to stamp it in that square. And notice how I could just use that one section I painted four times to fill up the square. Now, if you have a little bit of blank areas or if you go out of the square a little bit, no big deal, right? Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to paint with my red and notice how I'm kind of splattering. You guys will have more room on your table. I'm kind of at the front table demonstrating, so I kind of limited on space here. Okay, so this is with red and orange again, and then when you're done, you're going to stamp the square. So you're going to do that in two squares as well. Now, I know how extremely tempting it is to pop a bubble wrap, but you are not allowed to do that. Okay, here's why. One, if you pop the bubble wrap, you're not going to get the texture of the circles that you need, and two, when you're done, you're going to need to wash this off, dry it, and then come put it back on the front table so that somebody else is able to use it. Okay? All right. So those are our first two techniques. We did wet on wet, and then we did bubble wrap. For our next technique, we're going to use red, and we're also going to use purple. So now you need red and purple. And we're going to do um, the salt technique. Okay? So... Um, on the front table, you'll notice that I put these little cups of salt, okay? And the good news is that for this, you hardly need any, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to wet my paper a little bit first, and then I'm going to paint a little bit of red, and I'm also going to paint a little bit of purple over it, and I'm going to blend them together. Now, if I think it's too purpley, I can go back with my red and add more, okay? And while my paper is still really wet, and this is really important, it has to be really wet, you're going to sprinkle some salt on it. Now, what happens is the salt absorbs the water, and when it dries, it leaves almost like these crystal-like textures on your paper. But if the paint is not wet still, then it's not going to work. So you have to work extremely fast, extremely, extremely fast. Once again, notice I'm washing my brush in between switching colors. And if you are doing this and you notice that these sections aren't exactly the same, I promise you it's no big deal, okay? So I just did a little bit more. And you can even just cover the whole thing because you're going to do two, sec two sections, right? So I'm painting water first. Then I'm getting a little bit of my red. Then I'm getting a little bit of my purple, but I have to wash my brush in between because I don't want the paints to get dirty. You go back and get some more red, but I think it's too purpley. Because red should be our main focus color, right? Because this is for MS. Okay, still pretty wet. If I don't think it's wet enough, I can even just go back on some water on the top. And I'm just sprinkling salt. Like I'm just picking it up and sprinkling just a little bit. If you are going to town and dumping salt on your paper, you're going to have to clean up, okay? You don't need to be eating it, you don't need to be 
doing anything weird with it. We're just using it to create some different textures on our paint. All right. Okay, so it's still really wet. I'm just making salt. And then we have a little bit left to do up here. Okay, just a reminder, your paper and your paint have to be really wet when you still have the salt or this isn't going to work. Okay. I'm going for my red. Purple. I'll go back in with more red. Even more red. Sprinkle some salt. And you don't have to get salt in every little inch, okay? Also, don't be like freaking out thinking, oh my gosh, I don't have salt in that tiny little area. It's okay, okay? I promise. All right, so that is the first paper that you're going to do. And then when you're done with that, you're going to go set it on the drying rack in the corner of the classroom. So once again, here's what you need to do today. You need to section your 12 by 18 white piece of paper into six sections. You need to paint two sections using the wet on wet technique, paint two sections using the bubble wrap technique, and paint two sections using the salt technique. Friendly reminder, all of these materials are going to be found on the front round table in the classroom, and you are responsible for getting all of your materials, putting all your materials away, and picking it back to yourself and we will continue doing some work tomorrow.